Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower Daily Chat. I'm Mark, and with me tonight I have my good friend Jessica Lynn Parsons from the Dungeon Run. Hi everybody! How's it going? <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. I just got done with work, so yeah. um, this is the perfect time. I have some Chinese food here and a San Pelli, and I'm just ready to relax and chat. That's How awesome. are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> and you know what? I have a random audio in another computer playing for us right now. So I'm go going to go it. shut that off. Hold on. How well, dare I that will computer. be right back. Hi, guys. Uh, I have the chat pulled up so I can talk to you while he's turning that off. Hi. Hi, Kaibuk. Hi, Goofy. Hi, Pod. Hi, Corey. Hi, Timon. Hi, Gator. Hi, Scott. Hi, Nick. I hope you can hear me right now. Otherwise, I'm just mouthing things and you have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Wow, that was a random, unexpected moment. Okay. It's fine. I took over and I'm now the host of this show. Oh, okay. I appreciate it. So what questions do you have? <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> How do you like board games? I love board games. How about you? <laughs> I love board games. I wish let's, I had more. Let's start with that. What are some of your favorites, actually? Um, I, I, I guess I don't know what qualifies as a board game. It's just like any sort of game that goes in a box that you can play with people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what are some of your... I mean, we've talked about in the, in the past that you played like code names and things like that, right? I mean... Um, yes. So, yeah, I haven't really done more advanced board games than that, other than on the, the rare occasion. Um, I think the only thing that I've done recently of note is my friend introduced me to that the trains mm -hmm. game. Oh, yes. Which one? What is that called? <laughs> uh, you talking about Ticket to Ride? Yes. Yes. Ticket to Ride. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was fun. That was a, that's awesome. That was cool to learn. Yeah, it's uh, you know that's one of those big gateway games that folks use all the time to get others into the hobby, basically, right? I mean, it's it's such a fun experience, and people in, can engage with that game so quickly is what's really nice about it. So, yeah, it's just advanced enough that you feel like you're putting in some work, and you're like, yeah, I'm a real board gamer, but simple <laughs> enough that you can actually learn it in one night and not hate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. For a beginner, that is. Yep, indeed. So, but, I mean, you've been playing D&D &D for a while, though, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I blame my lack of board gaming on that, pretty much. Because <laughs> I, I just, like, will play Dungeons & Dragons a couple times a week, and that's what I do. So, yeah. uh, there's not a lot of time left for game nights. I, I need to do more game nights, though, for sure. Because I have a lot of friends, mm -hmm. Um like like Katie and Jake who have yes. tons of board games. And I know they, they do. Can introduce me. <laughs> <laughs> they should definitely be showing you more of those. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I just gotta push it. I gotta be like, I'm coming over. Yes, absolutely. Once we're done. Being quarantined. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Dungeon Run. Let's tell folks who aren't familiar with the Dungeon Run. I mean, tell us about your character that you play, and just kind of in general about the show. Okay. Uh, man, it's a lot. Um, <laughs> but I'll keep it concise. Yes. I play a young woman named Fahima. She's a fire genasi wizard. And uh, I'm part of a party with a tabaxi, a beach gnome, a human warlock, and a, ha a full orc. Yes. And right now, because of the stay-at-home orders in California, we are on a side, sort of a side quest um, that we're just now beginning to see a lot of pieces that our DM, Jeff Kanata, um, is pulling from the main storyline and interweaving yeah. so everything will make sense when we get back to the real world in, in both senses of the phrase. Um, but right now we are on a mission with a pirate and mm. we just got to a spooky island full of scary monsters and ghosts and scary porcelain dolls. I don't know if you got to that part yet. Not Mark. yet. No, I missed the last half <laughs> last <Wonder>. night. <laughs> yeah. I was um, so bummed. And I've been like a fan of the show. I mean... I think I had all of you go through my caffeine stream when I was doing that before you were had any uh, you were on any other any other shows. So I think I was the first. Yeah, you yeah. were for sure. Yep. So, yep. but yeah, I think I've had to listen to the. What's cool the versatility of the show, right, is the fact that obviously watching it live, people can interact with you guys and do all kinds of cool stuff, right, or yes. do bad things. <laughs> 
Yeah, so um, normally, man, the coolest thing about the show is, yeah, the, the, other than the, the production value, which is absolutely Huge. crazy. It's amazing. Even now. Um, yeah. I'll also go back to that because yep. there's just so much to talk about. But, um, yeah, they can interact with the show. You can submit forces of good and forces of evil, which kind of drop in Hunger Games style um, things that happen in the game that influence what's happening. And sometimes they're absolutely crazy. Like I grew a new, a noodle beard. Yes. One time. <laughs> but sometimes they're, they're boons, you know, they're, right. they're like you, you can roll, um, you get a plus four on your next, your next, uh, stealth check because, and then usually, uh, our audience is so amazing and so, um, detail oriented that they include fun little role playing tidbits in these cards. So it's not just plus four to yourself. It's like, right. You took one of Siv's daggers, and um, you know some some clever quip that goes along with it. <laughs> that's why you get the stealth. Um, and now we just have advantages and disadvantages, which also are are, are fun. Yes, and like especially the last well the last couple weeks I've been it's been pretty heavily you'll get advantage and then disadvantage they just cancel each other out a lot yeah. lately. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think this past game was the first time. Uh, we started seeing only advantages, or, or um, we started just seeing less of the the, the balance. Of right. Because it. usually it's like there's a, there's an evil side and a good side in the audience, right. and they both contribute to the balance <laughs> of the game. <laughs> Which really can change up the story for Jeff and you guys as well, right? I mean, it really yeah is pretty interesting. How you know well, there's a lot of shows like this, but. Um, the thing that I find so different with all of you is the fact that you embody the characters almost like it's a TV show. Um, you yeah. take on the role. It's not just we're playing D&D. It's that you actually take on the personas and interact with each other as such. And there's there's music set to everything. and Live music. Uh, yes. Man. It's yes. Just and, of course, uh, you saw, because you saw the first half last night, that mm -hmm. we now have our colored Yes. Movies. That was so uh, cool. So yeah, so the poor we have Siv this, though. Yeah, poor Siv. <laughs> he's just yellow. That's he's just yellow. He's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, in our show, we have a live map room, which is like a like a virtual reality type space where we mm -hmm. have our miniatures that are moved around, and we had a real translucent ghost NPC, and like little little um, props like books and bottles that fly around yeah. because we had a poltergeist and. It is, it's so mind blowing that they can it do is. that. It's so it's, impressive. It's so cool. But I almost, when you're in studio, the impressive table sets that happen uh, are amazing. Especially like the underwater one, right? That was crazy awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I almost cried when I saw that. It one, was for so sure. cool. So yeah. I, I don't know what I like better. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to say, right? Right, right. It's hard. I mean, I mean, obviously, like a tactile, um, real map is so cool because that's something that you, I mean, you don't get that privilege otherwise in right. any D and D game, you know. And uh, unless you have a very committed DM who's a hobbyist and mm -hmm. has poured like so much time and money into this, but but other than that, usually in a D and D game, at best you have like a TV screen mm -hmm. with. A, a colorful map so right. it's yeah i don't know the virtual <laughs> world is yeah it's, it's a hard call it's the a hard call right so perfect for right now because we're is. all virtual yeah for sure it is indeed but man those sets those props and stuff were so amazing um absolutely but you know we are here with uh a bunch of folks watching and we're gonna have some questions um and uh we definitely want to populate some of these in so First, we have: Do you like other RPGs than other than D and D? What are some of your favorites? Yes, I do. I love role playing. Um, <laughs> I and I have tried LARPing a couple times, which I know is like yes. a tier after RPGs. And I, I man, I love playing dress up. I'm an actor, and right. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig LARPing, but I, I just, I didn't, didn't. get into it. Right? But I, I'm, I'm willing to try again. I, I did yeah. it three times. Oh wow! I, think I, I feel like I gave it a fair shot, but so, I I will try again. That's um, impressive. But anyway, <laughs> I did it once, and I just wasn't really into it. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it's just like a personality yeah, thing. Then. I, I wanted I to be. Know. I wanted to, but it just didn't grab me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I just well, the first one I really liked because it was sort of a murder mystery type puzzle that my buddy wrote, and it was very, very, very cool. That that first yeah. experience was great, and that's why I came back. But the second one was. I don't know. I, I guess there, there was magical elements involved, and I couldn't quite 
get over the the this isn't real aspect right. of it because we were I was like talking to a person. Yes. So I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, RPGs. I haven't played that many other RPGs, but I I have GM'd Ten Candles a couple times. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. How's, um, how does that? How has that gone for you? I mean, GMing in general. It's hard. Yes. It's so hard. <laughs> I don't. I, I I'm I'm GMing another uh, another game soon. All ladies D and D one shot because nice. I want to get better at it. Yeah. But I don't know. I just like maybe it's because my DMs have always been so amazing. I've been so like I have Jeff Kanata and Kelly D'Angelo is another DM of mine. She does right. Girls Cup Glory and um, I just I feel like I don't provide enough detail or I don't get enough into it or I, I, I stumble over things and I or I think too hard um, but it is fun yes I, I do like storytelling yeah and I mean, like I said I want to get better at it so. well and that's what's so great about the D&D 5e right is that it's, it's more focused on the storytelling and now not so much the rules mechanics, uh, <laughs> mechanics yeah. and stuff so but I mean well, you've I, done some deep dive into your character for the spells and things though you've done some pretty amazing stuff for Fahima? Yeah, for Fahima. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I go crazy with these spells. Yeah. Morgan and I both go crazy with our spells. Uh, <laughs> we think about it a lot. Um, yeah, I have a whole chart where I compared wizard spells to druid spells and ranger spells to mm -hmm. see what the crossover was. Um, and I did, like, all of this math on the Conjure Minor Elemental spell to see which one mathematically was going to do the most damage. And, <laughs> yeah, I try. That's I awesome. Try. I make mistakes, but I try. <laughs> but you have, like, spellcaster meetings in between the show, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I we, love that. Morgan and I talk about <laughs> our spells, and then we'll also include Jared and Ron because they both DM and they've been playing for a million years. Yes. And they know what's up, too, and... They always compare it to older editions too, which is insightful. So yeah, I've I've only been playing since the late seventies. <laughs> Have you GM'd? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how do oh, you yeah. like it? I love it, and yeah? and I would definitely would go down the path of the before five E. I was doing more of the story stuff. I was less likely to be super strict about rules, except when it made sense to. Um, yeah. But I even did like like three D renders of the locations and throw them up on the TV. And uh, it, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. What? Yeah. So, oh, so, you, so you were one of those GMs. I was. That was a hobbyist <laughs> and putting in the time and the effort to make it an immersive yeah. experience. That's amazing. I loved it so much. <laughs> it was so fun. But yeah. Do you still GM? I, you know, I haven't for a long time. It's probably been five years. It, probably about just, five years. Just so. saying, if you were to GM again, you'd have a couple players. Yes, you know? that would be really fun. We should do that. <laughs> well, this is this is an interesting thing about your show that all of you are actors, and I think that yeah. plays into the characters so much more than just folks who play D and D, right? I mean, as far as an entertainment piece and an episodic kind of show. Um, the fact that you guys are improv and actors, it really helps. And the emotion that you guys convey between characters is awesome. I mean... Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it really pulls folks into the story. And you've now you've gotten quite a following. I mean, you've got folks doing shows around your show, right? Yes, yeah. We have a, we have a watch party that the audience does every week now. Um, and we had a celebration for our one-year anniversary that was very special. Yeah. Yeah, we're... Yeah, we, we say it every time because because they deserve it. We have the best community for the Dungeon right. Run. It's really special. So a uh, question we have from the audience. Uh, I know you said you didn't play a lot of board games, but have you done any uh, Dungeon Crawl board games? Maybe playing solo or even... No. With, no, you haven't done any of those. I don't even know what that is. Oh, okay. Well, I'll send you some stuff. <laughs> okay, I love that. I, I've been more free with my purchasing of games lately because I want to just experience board games right that's awesome well i have a whole bunch that i'll send you because I'm, <laughs> I'm all about the thematic story driven board games so these are i think you'll like these quite a bit okay cool so yeah um but yeah there's so many fun things that and so a lot of those games will um give me like the D, &D itch because i can't do a campaign but i can play for a couple hours one night in a game right so they really do that those board games that's that's good to hear because I do look for games that scratch my itch of not playing D and D. So I right. the opposite, you know. I want to yeah, get yeah. I want to supplement my Dungeons and Dragons with things that are slightly outside of tabletop. <laughs> oh, I like this question. Okay, 
How about, fess up now, how many sets of dice do you own? <laughs> oh, man. I don't even know. Where's my bag? Uh, I have this this many. Okay. Plus, plus all that. This many <laughs> plus my um, beautiful Labrador Labradorite dice that I splurged on. Yes, and those are awesome. Dice. Thank you. Yeah. And the dice that I left on set. Oh, Kathy. that's right. Because you, so, you thought you were going back, right? So that was... Uh, <laughs> we thought it was going to be like two, three weeks. Right. I mean, optimistically. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so my lucky dice are on Your set. Your lucky dice are on set. Time. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you guys, have, you've got all kinds of t-shirts and stuff now and all kinds of neat things. Yeah. Um, I love, too, the fact that your show has Lord Erebon. <laughs> yeah, you know, I... The fan celebration that happened for the one year anniversary, one of our um, one, of the, one of the guys in the audience, Corbin played, who does mm -hmm. our gifts. Uh, he did a short video with his kids, and his son said that his favorite part of the dungeon run was the Lord Araban intermission, and it melt it melted my heart. Yeah, I'm so I'm so happy that we have that extra element that is relatable to that age group. Right, me too. And that's the thing uh, you really do keep the show very family friendly and you have lots mm -hmm. of kids watching now yeah i said a, i said a, a swear word i said i said uh shite in yeah. my in my irish sort of irish <laughs> accent and it just like came out because yeah. i think i was in the accent and i was like oh, oh, oh no, no. <laughs> oh no i mean it's like kind of a, i mean it is i guess a swear word but kind of not a swear word and right but yeah we, we can't say stuff like that yeah exactly <laughs> All right, so from the from the chat, we have, how do you know Mark, and do you have any good stories to tell us about him, and vice versa? <laughs> um, I know Mark because, actually, how did we get introduced in the first place? Because we met, you met all of the cast at once, right? Uh, no, I think it's, I'm trying to remember, actually, right? So I think it's because we were both on Caffeine, and we should quickly say that if you want to see the dungeon run, caffeine.tv oh, yeah. is where to go watch it, right? Yes. But uh, we were both um, doing stuff on Caffeine, and I just when the show started, I think I just reached out to all of you. And that's just kind of how we virtually met, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, because we, you know, we interacted a bunch from there, and then... And then you came to L.A. Uh, and came we to met LA. in real life. Yeah, we met in real life. Hung yeah. out on set all night for a show. And uh, yeah. I was in L.A. filming with Becca for Game the Game. And yeah. it just was perfect timing. That was an amazing week because I did that. And I did Victory Point podcast and hung out at the Dungeon Run with you guys. I went and did an interview with Jeff at his house. Unfortunately, there were some technical issues with that interview. <laughs> oh, it's, I was going to say, I, I don't I, they haven't yeah, seen that one. No, I, uh, I had bummer. some sad, sadly had some audio issues. So um, well, that's why another reason, next time. right, I wanted to do this as well and get Jeff and all of you on and so forth. So, um, yeah. but the, I will say, you know, hanging out on set with you guys, that was pretty amazing, right? Because that's the night when the big underwater thing was exposed to oh, everyone that's right yeah yeah you came there that's i mean that's a highlight of the entire series you, you were there on that night i mean it was the amazing. energy of the room is, it was huge is, yeah yeah and I, my one of my favorite things about that particular set piece is that i was uh jeff and i went over and he goes you're not supposed to see this and i said i know <laughs> did you did you see it did you get a oh yeah i gotta look at it he's like oh, he, he just said like three or four times you know you're not supposed to see this i said yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> so so if i was jeff i would have a fun story about yes you, you would but as I, as i am me and i i was there uh when i met you in real life i was performing yes i don't know if i have any fun stories i wish i, I did though i wish i had some dirty secret i could share right. with everybody yeah although i think the the fun thing was when you said to me how in the world do you know Becca? <laughs> oh, <laughs> because yeah. you and Becca worked together on a short. Is that what it was? Yes, we we were in a movie together where she played my best friend. That's and right. And then later, just this past year, I think we did uh, a short together again. Yeah. Yes. So that's really We're cool. Friends. Yeah, that's really good. So yeah, I think it was just things just kind of happened. We didn't. There wasn't like. A uh, sudden run in, it just kind of fell into place because we were well, both. You're, you're so good at connecting with people and keeping in touch. It's really enviable, honestly. I, it, you're, this is happening because you connect with people and you like 
you, you have those ties that you nurture and um, yeah. yeah, I admire it. And I, I love, thank you for doing it. Of course. And I love that the fact that you guys are friends. I mean, that's what, I mean, that's what motivates me. I want these people as friends. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, they're they're a pretty cool crew. Yep. So, and even just the crew beyond, you know, behind the camera, those folks mm-hmm. are amazing as well. So, yeah. and it's a huge production, the show. So. Yeah, I mean, it, kudos all to Alex, the creator. Yes. Alex, because he he brings everybody together, and he works with the same people, and we love everybody. Yeah. Do you have any favorite moments? Um, what are a couple of, of your run? of the dungeon run? What are a couple of your favorite moments? Oh boy, um, you'd think I would have put a lot of thought into this question, uh, but there's just so many. Um, I don't know, I I guess it's kind of a silly answer, but I always get very excited when Siv and Lily have romantic moments. <laughs> yes. I just like... Uh, you get giddy, moments, I notice. I am <laughs> I know. I'm sitting there like, ah, please, <laughs> please do it. I'm such a sucker for romance. I love that. <laughs> I would 100%. I've, I've been in D&D groups before where, you know, there's like, there's two people who kind of like always take the stage. There's one person who always takes the stage and we're like, yeah, 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 sure, the limelight. But I would honestly 100 percent honestly watch a side show of Siv and lily's burgeoning romance <laughs> right it's really good and and not only that but just just how all your characters have grown i mean because you and even as actors you guys didn't know each other when you started right yeah we didn't know so we didn't know each uh, other and it never showed yeah, even from episode one on it looked like you guys have been hanging out forever you know that's awesome well yeah. i mean i think that's um Partly because of our personalities, partly because Alex and the team did really great casting, but also kind of to go back to what you said about how we are all actors, we are acting. It's all a lie. No. Yeah. Um, we, <laughs> we don't really know each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a lie. It's all a facade. <laughs> making it. Uh, the, as, uh, I was going to say, I, I've definitely played in, I've been lucky to play in a lot of groups with amazing players who mm-hmm. are not actors, who are just, you know, really into the role playing aspect of it and um, really good at improv, but I think the difference is if you've been in the acting world a little bit, is you just kind of have a more in, of an intuition for like um, beats and yes anding and the the flow of energy and the storytelling, and I think that only helps uh, our friendship too right. because we're not just coworkers and we're not just like a bunch of hooligans getting together to play D and D. We're there with like a purpose and also a sense of artistry. Right. And it shows. It really does. I mean, you guys are amazing. Uh, it's Thank definitely you. my favorite uh, D&D related stream. You know, it's just really good. Thank um, you. So this is this is a question directly for me. So, Mark, did you play D&D using the white box? So this is an interesting question, though. What was your first version of D&D that you played? I've only ever played 5e. Oh, really? Yeah, I've never. I, I connected with a chick who was going to get me into Pathfinder, but that okay. never um, that never happened. I mean, okay. this whole thing, the whole pandemic happened shortly after that. Yeah. Um, I am interested in Pathfinder. Yeah. I'm intimidated by it because it's so different. Uh, but yeah, only five E. Wow. And I'm. I feel. I've, man, from what I've heard, it's it's a great place to start. <laughs> it is. Oh my grow, gosh! So. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I started. I'm cool with it. I had the original red box, not the white box. I had a friend who had the white box, but I never had that one. I had the original. Is- so the very first version was the big red box that if you see, it's probably all beat up somewhere at this point. But I've gone from, you know, I like I played 3.5 forever. I mean, that version of D&D quite a bit. Um, but, uh, you know, as a kid playing D&D, it was all about oh, another encounter. Let's beat up orcs. I mean, that's what oh, you, yeah. that's what you do. Right. It wasn't about storytelling. It was about let's roll dice and beat up orcs. You know, <laughs> I did that's, a ton of that. I guess. Yeah, that's that's probably why more people are getting into it. I mean, I'm sure there's, there's millions of articles on why 5e is so successful. But I yeah. know that I've I've GM'd for noobs, you know, people people who've never even played anything close to an RPG before. And I definitely lean more on the side of RP and storytelling because mm-hmm. yeah, it's intimidating to get into the mechanics of fighting. It's, it's less yes. fun, you know, it is. And right? when I, when I say like, guys, it's don't be intimidated. I know it sounds weird and geeky or whatever, but <laughs> honestly, it's just like collaborative storytelling. So I want to focus more on that aspect of it. Yeah. Than 
fighting. And have you brought like new new be- new friends into role playing that have never played? How does that gone? Uh, as in, brought people like my friends who already ex- who already exist. Yes. <laughs> or or I guess as opposed to uh, meeting new people and then becoming friends with them after this. Yeah, uh, the former for sure. I mean both. Yeah, I'm probably confusing the question, but <laughs> That's but right. yes, I have brought my friends in who've never role played before. Yeah. Most of them have liked it. A couple have not. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. You right? Do you? Do you? Uh, Most of them like it. Question we have: uh, Were you introduced to RPG in Grand Rapids or was it elsewhere? <gasps> Who said that? Who that's knows from, from Grand Lan. Rapids? From Lan. Lan. Uh, Kozar. Well, I guess it's uh, it's on the internet that I'm from Grand Rapids. Um, <laughs> it is. No, I. I learned re- relatively recently when I, 2016, I think, ish. Yeah, the summer of 2016, I was here in LA and my a couple of my girlfriends. Actually, I can say though that the girlfriend who invited me to join this group is also from Grand Rapids. Okay, so, nice. There's that, there's there, you've that got a tie there. then for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I learned in LA. And I'm, I'm lucky that I did because um, some people reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram and they're like, hey, I, I want to get started, but I just feel like there's not a good group around or I don't know what to do. And, um, you know, I give them advice, but I'm like, I, I feel lucky that I was able to do um, uh, Meltdown Comics in L.A. I don't think they exist anymore, but they it was a big comic book store in L.A. that had just like tons of people coming in to play D&D. And that was Satine Phoenix's group that she started. Yeah. And so she had a lot of connections in the community, too. So that's for those cool. of you who don't have the, <laughs> the, the L.A. comic book store. Scene, right. <laughs> um, I wish you did. And I'm sure I hope there is something. It's pretty amazing. Uh, comparable where you live. Right. Oh, so here's a great one. There's just this more of a comment. But in the story, Fahima is unaware that they kissed. Right. Yes. <laughs> I know. There's been a couple times where I've been I've been trying to ask Lily about her and Siv and I'm like, okay, you can't metagame. What actually happened? What does FEMA actually know? Because I get so excited as myself for the moments and I'm like, oh, okay, you don't know that. You don't know that. But what do I know? I don't think I know anything. I don't think I know anything at all other than they are they're kind of into each other. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to find out. Right? That'll be a fun moment on on camera for sure. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll probably have to. Uh, we'll have to have some kind of uh, command that says, "Okay, mute, mute your headphones," because Jessica's about to scream. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> How about video games? What are some of your favorites? Well, I just got into RPGs in video games. Mm. I played like half or so of Witcher Three, and oh, then yeah, nice. I- I love Tomb Raider too. Is that considered an RPG? Mm, it's more of a Not puzzle. Really, it's right? more of a puzzle game, really. Yeah, like a platform yeah. puzzle game. Um, but I just finished Assassin's Creed oh, Odyssey. Odyssey, nice. And oh my so god! Good. <laughs> oh, I was obsessed with that game. Yeah, I <laughs> I have loved all the Assassin's Creed games. They're so yeah. so fun. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah. Because I I the other day I did a deep dive into the like the assassin's creed ranked list yes to see what we should play because some of them look really cool i'm a, I'm a total um francophile so i was like mm. oh i want to play what is it unity or whichever yes. one's set during the french revolution yeah. but then i saw that that game was really buggy and it's yes. ranked pretty low yeah. so and there's as far as the enjoyment of them the ones that are buggy it's only not because of the story or the gameplay it's because they've they've had a few that have been buggy that I oh, okay. that I didn't finish them or I got frustrated, but you know it's hard for me. The original was so fun because nothing was like it before, right? That's what I've read. You yeah, could, you could you could play it just for the nostalgia value of being like, wow, this changed things when it, it came out. So did it was just incredible, and just the and all the stuff, the scaling the wall and how you quickly bam 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 bam, and you feel like you're doing it. It's so. <laughs> Even from Witcher, when I, I I had been playing Witcher for a hundred hours, and then I went into play Assassin's Creed, <clears throat> and I think I streamed the first time I played it mm-hmm. on Caffeine, and the first time I jumped, I scaled a wall and then like perched on top yes. of something. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> it's so oh good. Oh my god, I love it! I love it! I love 
that I freaked out because I can't. I was like, I'm so sticky. I can just go anywhere. This is incredible. <laughs> so fun, right? I mean, it just, it just is a blast. I mean, you, the, and I, I have a theater room in my basement, so I play on like a 120 inch screen. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. Um, so you have to come to oh, Colorado yeah. to see it. <laughs> yeah, that's my vacation. Exactly. <laughs> Just sit in Mark's basement. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that would be amazing. We should do that. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite one? Uh, of the Assassin's Creed? Yes. Um, I, I still feel like the first one is. Just because... Yeah? Just because it was just, I was so blown away because nothing else had been like it, right? And then it's like it's like the first time you see a lightsaber, right? It's cool again, but it's not as cool as that first time, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, I, just, I, I was reading that one of them came out and it changed the uh, like the skill tree progression or yes, something like so that. Was that those the second thing, one? I think the second or third one. It's there. Okay. I mean, there's so many now, right? So I think it was the second or third one. I can't remember for sure, but. Yeah, I mean, that was a really nice enhancement from what they originally had done. But I, that first one, though, it's like I, I've i played the others like once. But that first one I played like four times all really? the way through. Just because, oh, man, this was amazing. I want to do it again, you know. And uh, But I haven't done that with any of the others. So I, I did buy uh, Assassin's Creed 2. So I think I'm going to start with that one. Uh, this in Italy, and I have like the deluxe, oh, yeah. whatever version. That yeah, was yeah. On Steam, the, that was so. a, in Italy. That was a really good one, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had, just had so much fun with those games. Any other video games that you're addicted to like that? Uh, well, the only other video games that I've been addicted to are, are like when I was younger. I was addicted to The Sims for sure. Okay. But, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I definitely had a long period of time where I wasn't really into video games, and I. I don't know, maybe it was just college or something. I just couldn't get into it. Everyone was playing Skyrim, and I was yeah. like, eh, eh, not for me. But I also, that at that time, didn't know what Dungeons & Dragons was, and was like, that sounds like weird, nerdy stuff that I would never do. So I was, you know, d- different time, different time. But yeah. I've played, I, I had a show, I think I've told you about it before, Damsels & Dishes yes. on Twitch. Yes, show. So we would do themed recipes every week and so we were like okay we really need to like play some video games and we had we were lucky to have a really cool audience who gifted us a couple games they thought would be cool that they wanted to see so uh, my steam library is crazy right now with a bunch (laughs) of different games and i've definitely dabbled in a lot of them uh life is strange yes uh, a couple horror ones too um but as far as getting obsessed with them sims heroes of might and magic witcher and Assassin's Creed is pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you finish Witcher 3 then? No, I didn't, but I just discovered that you can mod it. So yeah, I'm you can. That's go right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I generally play everything on my console because, again, it's hooked up to the big screen. So I don't oh, yeah. really mod, do any of the mod stuff. But um, It must be faster too, right? Because my boyfriend and I played Assassin's Creed side by side. Uh, And he played on an Xbox. I played on PC. And the loading screen was so much longer for me. Yeah. It's stuff pops for, and I've got like PS4, I've got Xbox One, I got all this stuff. So <laughs> jealous. It's, yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see if we have any other questions here. Um, oh, here we go. What? Okay, what video game has the best cutscene after you've beat the final boss? Oh. I don't know. I honestly haven't finished many games. Oh, okay. Of the think, ones of the ones you finished, I think Odyssey is the only one that I've actually finished. What? Yeah, I played <laughs> through. I played through a lot of. Uh, uh, oh, I, I didn't even mention like Crash Bandicoot. All the, oh all the, yeah. All the PlayStation Two games. All the yeah. like Spyro. All that stuff. I was I was obsessed with those. I, for, I completely forgot about middle school. Uh, <laughs> I it's just, it's just off the shelf at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, everybody gets obsessed with those games. I don't yeah, know for sure. But, um, yeah. What was I saying? Uh, just about... Finish the games. Yeah. yeah, lately... Lately, I haven't finished any games. I've just done a... Oh, oh, Alice Alice Madness Returns. That's oh. another one I was obsessed with. Duh. Yeah. It's all coming back to me now. It's I didn't play that one, but it looked too. really good. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Looked, yeah. yeah. My, my buddy and, uh, played it, and he I, loved it. I was gifted, I actually have right here, um, the art of Alice Madness Returns. It's a book about the art direction of it, and it's uh-huh. so cool. Um, yeah, that 
but I didn't finish that one. I didn't. Fin- I haven't finished any of the Tomb Raiders. I've gotten you know far in them, but I've never actually oh, man. done the final scene. I so. remember the thing about Tomb Raider that still sticks with me is the fact that I had Tomb Raider for my PC, um, way way the first version, and then they released like the first actual dedicated video card for for video games, and it was like a piggyback. It would sit under your normal video card, and you would loop between the two, and and. Tomb Raider was developed for this very first version of a video card, and uh, it was just t- suddenly... Some of the original Tomb Raiders, right? The original Tomb Raider, yeah. And it, when I plugged that in for the first time and launched the game, it was like a whole other world. It's like, wow. oh my gosh, because everything before that was all pixely, and yeah. you know, <laughs> so everything smoothed out, you had good textures, although textures tend to slip in those old games sometimes, but... Um, Man, you're in you're in such a crazy spot in time because you've seen video games go from yes, man, so so like pixely and yep. uh, unrealistic to whatever we have now, which is, I mean, uncanny yeah. valley. It's amazing, like right? And getting there. Have you done any of the VR stuff? Only once. Okay. I, my sister has a had a vr set and i did the game where you use the lightsabers oh and you yes chop up the boxes as it's they so fun <laughs> fly at you yeah that was very fun i was like dang i should get this for exercise yeah my favorite vr experience is the star wars the void though have you done that no so this is uh you know it's like a ride kind of thing but you go and you experience the star wars world you actually move through the environment and uh there's there's heat and there's cold and they say grab a blaster and you actually grab a blaster out of the thing and you're physically holding something even though you're seeing it's just phenomenal. Wow, that sounds <laughs> super cool. Yeah, that was amazing. How do you how do you do it without I'm just thinking of um, Ready Player One where they have like a they can don't they have like a treadmill that they walk yeah, on? Yeah, no, this is they actually have a, a a warehouse laid out where you actually move through the environment. So, yeah. What? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Oh, so you amazing. go somewhere to play this game. Yes, you do. Yes. So what? it's like uh, downtown Disney. Uh, um, they have it there, I think. And I played it in L.A. I forget where in L.A. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Look I, it up. Look I, it up. Can't believe I forgot. I'm writing it down. What yes. Is it called? Star Wars The Void. It's amazing. It's my. You feel like you're in the Star Wars world. It's just phenomenal. Star Wars The Void. I'm surprised I haven't heard of this because um, I do uh, – a D and D princess show, and we have a character Leia, um, and Sage, who plays Leia, is a huge Star Wars fan, nice. and I'm sure she, I'm 100 percent sure she's heard of this, and <laughs> probably even done it, but I'm just surprised I haven't heard of it before because right. I thought she would mention oh, it. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta go look it up. It's just so much fun. So, oh, here's a this is a fun question. So you know we talked about before you and I that. The way I lost weight with all the walking and stuff. So I do uh-huh. I do a segment where I walk and talk. And they're asking, does Jessica enjoy going on walk, nature walks like I do? <laughs> I do, yes. I don't go on as many walks as I should, but um, I get out to nature as often as possible. Last weekend, I went out to the forest and hung out by a creek all day. And yeah. I think next weekend, we're going to try and go up to uh, Alabama Hills to camp there for nice. a few days. That's so. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I see your Instagram pictures where you're hiking, and I'm super jealous. So yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. in Colorado, so I shouldn't be. I mean, I got lots of places to go, but uh, you definitely have some pretty nice uh, spots that you go to. Last summer, we rafted on the Colorado River. We did a rafting trip for a couple of days. Nice. Yeah, That's it was awesome. so cold though the first couple of days. Oh yeah, of course. Y'all have like Michigan weather there. Yeah, you know, but the snow never stays, right? It goes away. So it like even during the heavy winter. It'll be there for like two, three days, and then it's gone. But I guess you, from what I've seen, you have fluctuating weather. Like oh, yeah. Like you can, one it'll day be it'll different. snow, and the next day it'll be well, 80. And you're like, it can what? be different in 20 minutes' time. It can be different. <laughs> Ugh, <laughs> you know, weather, and, mountain weather. Yeah, well, in the mountains, snow hangs around forever, right? But down here in Fort Collins, we're still at elevation, like 5,000 feet. But um, it, uh, we have all kinds of weather up and down <laughs> all over the place. How did you end up in Colorado? Were you born I, there? I was born here. Yep. Oh, all, okay. All, always been here. So, yep. So. How does it compare to other states, other cities that you visited? Um, 
I like it here the best. I just, I mean, I enjoy, just mostly because I get to see all of you when I come to L.A., but um, <laughs> that's really the main reason. I don't think I'd want to live there. I think I'm just, it's... Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Fair. But I have a blast when I go. I just don't know that I'd want that every day. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like L.A. until I lived here for about a year. Yeah. And then I fell, then I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it recently, too, because you can, because of all the places you can go from L.A., but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I, if I stopped acting, I would probably move somewhere else. Okay. Yes, I would. I mean, obviously, the for the work you do and, like, some of the stuff that I've done there, obviously you need to be there, right? I mean, yeah. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. Um, let's see. Oh, here's – would you rather be a character in a Disney or a horror movie? Ooh. Here's the thing, though. Marvel is part of Disney. Yes. So now are you, we talking like well, full, Dis- full Disney. Disney here? Let's do full scope Disney. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I do love horror movies a lot. I mean, yeah, I guess I'd have to say Disney just because of the scope of it. But I mean, uh, horror movies like, uh, what, was, what was the one in the, the big mansion, Ready or Not? That was so good, such mm-hmm. an iconic role. Or, or like Clue is not a horror movie, but you know if we're putting if we're gonna expand Disney into Marvel, then I feel like we should include movies like Clue in the horror genre. Yeah, you know, like yeah, stabby stabby stuff. <laughs> uh, that's iconic too. Um, right. But yeah, Disney, Disney for sure. <laughs> I would agree because mostly because of the Marvel stuff, right? And I'm not a huge horror movie guy, but yeah, I mean. Oh, well, Star Wars too. Star Wars yeah, is Disney. Yeah, right. So of course, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Absolutely. Ray is my role model. I just want to live in that world, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we don't want to live in the world of a horror movie for sure. Yeah, no. It's funny. I go, you know, I do my walks every morning, and I walk to these abandoned buildings every day. It's just part of my where I'm staying away from people, basically. So I walk through this area. And they've got these big do not enter, no trespassing. But today, I walk by that same building and the door is wide open. I'm like, you know, this is how those movies start. I am not going in. Yeah, right? <laughs> you're watching the screen you're like, don't go in. Don't, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't be tempted. Don't, Stop. Don't <laughs> we deserve to die. Yep. This is crazy. But yeah, no, I'm just generally not a horror movie fan. No? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean there are some. I like the ones that that are more suspenseful driven instead of for gore for gore's sake, you know. Yeah, same. Yeah. So that that's more intriguing for me for sure. Like the woman in black, right? Um, we saw the play in the UK, and then when that movie came out, I mean it's a little bit different, but they did stick to a lot of the story in the play really well. So huh, I yeah, seen it. yeah, I it's think. it's. I think just a lesser known movie. People didn't really, but because of seeing the play and they were like, Oh man, we have to see this, you know? <laughs> so have you, have you seen the one, I forget what it's called, but it's about the woman who's deaf in her house. And it hurt. Someone tries to break into her house. Oh, I haven't seen it. Did you, I have not seen has, it. I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the name of it. Um, it's like, it's like hush or don't speak. Hush. Or, it's hush. Maybe right. It's called hush. Maybe. Is it? I can't remember. I don't remember. know. But that's the kind of movie I was thinking of when you said you like suspense movies because yeah. I don't think there's a lot of gore. It's just like, what's what's going to happen? What is? How is he going to get in? Is she going to see him? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. What are, so? What are your favorite movie genres then? Romance. Yeah. <laughs> Period pieces, fantasy. Yeah, I'm such a I'm such a girl. I love. Uh, I love. Yeah, like my favorite movies are Titanic and Moulin Rouge and Pride and Prejudice and um, When Harry Met Sally, like Anastasia, all these like romantic movies for sure. Yeah, that's what I go for. Love yeah. Downton Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I, I, I like Downton Abbey as well, but it's, it's, yeah? fu- it's funny because I like it. I got into it when I, I was really sick at home one time and there was nothing to watch and I started watching it and I'm like, oh, I kind of like this. <laughs> so that, That's great that you're open-minded enough to, to give it a go because yeah. I feel like some people are like, yeah, I'm out. It's early early 1900s, I'm out. Yeah. I think I think what it is, it's just the characters. I, the story itself didn't really pull me in, but the characters did, right? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely um, 
a piece where you're appreciating the acting and the, the costumes and everything. Right. And, you know, I mean, you've done a fair amount of acting, actually. And one of my daughter's favorite shows you were in, uh, Shelby Loved Scorpion when it was on. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that was one of her favorite shows. Oh, wow. <laughs> and cool. you, what, yeah. you were in the, the convention episode or something? Uh, Cosplaying they, or something? I played Cosplay Girl. They were in line for a... I think to get their comic book signed or something oh, that's like what that. It was. To get okay. a book signed, yeah, yeah, just a little little one liner. Yeah, she she was all giddy when I told her. She's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, she must be a fan of uh, Catherine. Is it Catherine McPhee? I think so. Or who's the lead? The brunette, uh, right? I think I don't remember her name. Can't yeah, I think that's her, her. I think it's her. So, but yeah, <laughs> she. Normally, I'd be like googling all of this <laughs> as we talk. That's awesome. So, uh, do you? Do you go into each episode of the Dungeon Run just blindly, or are you? Um, do you have like a plan, like before the show starts, or do you just let things happen to you? Um, it depends. Most of the time, I don't have a plan because it's hard to predict what'll happen. Um, but I, I do. We still, after every game, we have a discussion about what happened during the episode, and mm-hmm. so that's that's kind of the work that's done to prep the next game um, at the end of the previous game. And I do, I do occasional diary entries and I do, I do think about my character choices and think about the direction I want to take her in and her obstacles and things like that. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Jeff about some character ideas. Um, I have a new spell that I want to create in the game at some point. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much as much as I, can plan just because yeah we don't know you don't know what's gonna happen right gonna happen like in the main storyline we're about to go into who knows what and maybe find the ashen mage i mean well, right. how do you prepare for that other than out. just looking over your spells and thinking well hope i don't run out <laughs> <laughs> do you and do you gravitate towards playing spell casters or are you just doing this yeah. okay you do in general yeah i like having a break and playing a barbarian or a fighter but uh, yeah, I like I just like the, the 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 puzzle of figuring out spells. Um, I mean, it's crazy playing a wizard with so much access to spells. Yeah, it's, there's a ton of that. I'm definitely the barbarian character. I love that yeah. so much, so much. I just always have. It's just so. I think it's because I read Conan as a kid, and I just uh, that's why that always is the first thing I go to. <laughs> well, it's also like what's easier to role play too. Yeah, you know? s- true. I, I played a barbarian for a year or so, a half work barbarian, and I just found that I I was doing a lot of RP to kind of make up for the lack of this like puzzle and mm. I don't know. It, it just felt a little a little unsatisfying to me to play a barbarian for that long. So that's yeah. why I went back to magic users. Magic. Just didn't have as much depth, so to say. But I, yeah, but clerics are kind of a good happy medium, and I really want to play a cleric in a long-term campaign because I, I love that class. I really fell in love with that class. All right, so here's a great question. So um, has, uh, Lance says he hasn't seen any Dungeon Run yet. Uh, do you feel the need to take notes, or do you just sort of wing it and rely on memory as a player? I have to take notes because yeah. I have a terrible memory, notoriously bad memory. I, I, I'm so embarrassed. Even something recently happened where, where I met. Remember, I, I, uh, uh, when I met um, baby young Mervis. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, who's that boy? What's his name?" And everyone was like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> I was so embarrassed because I just, I, I don't know. Like, I can't. I, I'm I'm listening with rapt attention yeah. to my DM, but I I don't know. It's like my I can't remember things when they're spoken out loud. I have yeah. to see them written down. I mean, so I, yeah, I have, I have trouble with names just in the real world, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the same sort of thing. Like unless you see it written down, right? Unless exactly. It's repeated multiple times, but yeah, like NPCs, I know who they are when Jeff says them, but I I can't regurgitate that information. Right. So yeah, endless notes. Uh, interesting. So yeah, the, that's the, <laughs> I even, I, I th- pretty sure that taking notes has always been a key aspect of me playing D&D, right? Because especially, I mean, I've been in campaigns that lasted a year or more, 
you know, or three years actually. And and sometimes we have to go back to something that happened two years ago. And I pulled up my notes and and uh, you know, and then it's it's funny because we went from straight up paper and pencil, and now like the guys that I play with, everybody brings their laptops now, and everything's really done. yeah. The people other than rolling dice, people still want to do that, but everybody's playing. The character sheets are on their laptops, and they're they're taking notes, and uh, it's. I'm a big. I like paper. Yeah. I like paper, Good. but I will say I started using D and D Beyond for the Jasper's Game Week, oh, and yeah. I kind of fell in love with it. Yeah, like I could definitely see myself bringing, starting to bring my laptop to making that transition from from paper to laptop because it's so convenient to just yeah. like mouse over your spells and it pops up and not having to rifle through my papers every time. Right. What is your favorite NPC voice that Jeff does? Um, uh, I really liked the one he just did. Which one? Of, uh, the Viscount. The Viscount. In the tower. <laughs> uh, or the Salvage Manders are iconic too. Yeah, that right. one. That one was like as soon as he started doing it, we were all just like, uh, what? <laughs> what is happening? He broke our brains. Yeah. That was what he did as, as soon as he came back from his um his his break from his, his, his surgery. Eye surgery. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. What about you? What's your favorite? Oh, it's still, 100% life is pain. Oh, Jorah. Jorah. He's <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> He's so good. I do like Whitebeard quite a bit as well, actually. Yeah, Whitebeard's cool. Um, yeah, and Jorah, Jeff goes into his slow voice. Yes, he does. And he does that whole, you know, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I love how, how, you know, not just you, all of you, but how Jeff jumps into the characters as well. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, it really adds a lot to the show. Um, and I know there's other shows that do that, but I feel like you guys make it more of this episodic acting. Like almost, I almost wish it was like animated and we were mm. sw- just watching episodes of, of that, you know, because it's so well, good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Thank just... you for saying that. We wish that too. It'd be so cool. <laughs> It'd be so fun. Yeah. I love that so much. But do you have like a favorite interaction with the other um, characters or other actors on the show? <sighs> um, I really like James and Fahima's relationship, and we haven't really had a lot of moments um, in, a, in a while. We haven't had a moment between them, I don't think. At least not a, a deeper moment. Um, but yeah, that, that relationship is always nice, because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a little more complicated than it seems, I think, on the surface. Um, I also like when Siv and Fahima talk because he is so, like, bad boy secretive that I'm he like, is. ooh, I got to talk to him about his feelings. <laughs> well, yeah, and, I mean, I feel like I, I can't pick favorites here because I'm here, I'm like, I love my interactions with Ugo. I really <laughs> want to keep developing my bond with, with, with Lily. <laughs> right. Well, and your character has some pretty um, intense, per- t- perhaps dark secrets or power that nobody else has, right? I mean, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Yeah, for, for me as well. Don't <laughs> you don't happen. know, right? But, I mean, just the from where you started to now, I mean, just the evolve. And I know that there's doing the time travel stuff and all that, but just the character development has been huge. So. Yeah, um, yeah. Have you had a favorite moment for Fahima? Um... Favorite moment for Fahima? I I don't know. I guess I don't. I don't have a favorite moment that I can think of offhand. Um, I guess I just like it anytime I can make people laugh. Yeah. Like uh, when I made the fart joke, everybody <laughs> laughed. That was that was that was a that was a good moment. It was. It was a good moment. <laughs> that usually makes me feel good. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, here's a good one. What part of the story do you want to go back and explore more of all the episodes so far? Zanelka. Yeah, that's good. Zanelka. I yeah. had a love interest for one episode. One episode. Gone. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I hope she comes back. Or or that there's another monster because, it's, I mean, Fahima just likes, you know, good-looking monstrous humanoids so right, if there's right. another one who comes along that would be great too it doesn't need to be zanelka right that can be a passing flirtation <laughs> that's awesome oh uh, yeah so the 
it must be from how do you feel the the characters or how your interactions with your castmates has changed from like the first episode to now well there's a lot more trust the flow um is a lot better um there's just a, a more of a comfortable energy definitely of, of giving each other time and and space to do character moments um but it's also become a lot more specific i think which is kind of like a hard thing to describe but i think we we get it you know it's like you well maybe maybe you don't maybe we don't get it because i can't explain it uh, <laughs> It's just, um, yeah, more specific. We we have little moments, and we know each other really well. Mm -hmm. We know our characters really well, that is. And so um, micro moments that happen, we can kind of store away, and we'll come back later. And it all kind of just flows organically, and we, we don't have to really talk about it. Um, yeah, I'm probably not doing a very good job of explaining that, but it's... Um, <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> it's it's just gotten more comfortable and better. Yeah, that's good. Um, what would you say going into the show um, that you were concerned about or or maybe that turned out to be, oh, it wasn't a big deal at all? Uh, from, like, episode one, you're like, did you have, like, uh, I don't know how this is going to work out or... I'm really nervous about playing this type of character or any of that that was like, oh, it really, none of that mattered. This has just been a blast. I, I don't think so. I think I just was very optimistic. Yeah, from the good. Get-go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't have anything that I was really Scared of that that became better because the thing that I was scared of I still am scared of, which is the fact that I chose a character trait to be that I am uh, sympathetic towards monstrous creatures mm. <laughs> and I don't want to kill them. Right, and I love that about theme. That's awesome. It's so hard. It is it's so hard to play because it's like it, it becomes an obstacle and it can turn situations into like about that when it shouldn't be about that and right it, it's just like a, a tricky trait to navigate yeah so and you, you that probably still does give me trouble yeah you probably have to you know weigh that with oh is this going to slow down the story how much do i put that in there um yeah yeah i mean i'm definitely navigating it now better like we i i'll find a way to justify why my character would would kill a monster <laughs> yeah interesting huh so let's real briefly talk about the fan interaction. Um, how how much does that play into your decisions in the game? And then how how surprising has it been? How much that has really evolved? It's well, <laughs> it's impossible to predict. So you can't really <laughs> plan on anything. But I guess I do get. Um, I kind of rely on it, and I also would. Re I have so many cards on set that I review before each game, and mm -hmm. I know I have in my arsenal, and I I strategize with the cards. So while I can't plan for the new ones that come in and take effect immediately, those ones, um, I just know they're going to affect the story in a big way in the future. So I'm excited to get back to them. Yes, and I mean you have a. I've been there, so I see the stack of cards that you have at the ready. I mean, you have yeah. so many possibilities at this point. And yeah. uh, do none of those expire, right? You just They're just an ongoing thing for you guys, right? All those. Well, they yeah, they when, when we use them, they go away. Yeah, but um, I mean, until you use them, you just have, I mean, some of the stacks, like uh, Jared, he's got so much. Yeah, well, and some of them are, are <coughs> just things that you can't, bless you, that you can't really use until the moment happens in the game true so and i have this one card that jeff said has given him, him nightmares which is you can rip out the tongue of any enemy you choose rendering them mute for an eternity oh. and i have yet to use that card because i'm like okay i gotta i gotta save that yeah. one that's like i think powerful i think you might need that for the upcoming <laughs> 
But I don't want to rip out, rip out the tongue of the Ashen Mage. Maybe because you do. <laughs> I want to hear what she has to say. Well, after you hear what she says. Can you imagine Jeff's face if I was like, "Bam!" Rip out her tongue as soon as we, as soon as we see her. Right, just right in the middle of her he speech. Would melt. Right, right in the middle of her speech. I think you should do. <laughs> <laughs> no way. It's too. But fun. I will put it to good use at some point. Oh, that's good. Cool. Well, we're coming up on the end of our hour. Wow, that flew by. I know. It's so fun. Always awesome. Four talking. more hours. Four, four more Let's hours. do it. Well, and that's <laughs> real quick. I mean, your show is like four hours. Yeah. So, yep. and we go full I four. mean, I've watched just about every episode or listened to the podcast and you don't even notice that it's that long. I know. In my, in my D and D sessions outside of the dungeon run, you feel it around like hour three, you know, you're like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm getting tired. I'm getting yep. a little drunk, whatever. But yeah, the, the dungeon run, I, every time we end, I'm like, it's over. What? No. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> How did that happen? I know. Yep. But that's all, Jeff. Yeah. And uh, it's actually, I actually really enjoy doing the podcast version because I'll do it on a walk, right? While I'm out for two hours, I'll be. That's a great idea. It's really awesome. It's super engaging, even in that aspect, you know. So. That's how the only way I've been able to listen to Critical Role is, is yeah, actually exercising through the same and way. listening to the podcast. It yep. makes it go by so fast. Oh, it's amazing. Absolutely. So, Jessica, tell folks how they can find you. Um, and so forth. Yeah, you can find me. Um, on Twitter at Jessica Parsons, on Instagram at Jessica Lynn Parsons, uh, every Wednesday on the Dungeon Run at caffeine.tv slash the Dungeon Run. I'm also in a Disney Princess campaign that is on Sundays, yes. starting not this Sunday, but the next on twitch.tv yes. slash dice and everything nice. <laughs> and um, my website is jessicalynnparsons.com if you want to see my acting stuff. Yes. There's always that, too. <laughs> and an incredibly talented actress beyond the gaming. <gasps> Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me more. I need the affirmation. <laughs> That's awesome. I thank you so much for being here, Jessica. It was thank you for so, having me. So fun always chatting with you. I appreciate yeah. all everything your support it's just fantastic same to you you're you're awesome yeah thank you all right folks thanks for joining us tonight thanks for being here and until next time we'll see you at the table night everybody if the outro will play (laughs) and it's not playing Ha, ha, ha.